Are we on now? I have to presume our recording has begun because it's past time. This is Tuesday, April the 15th, and we're in Sparks, Nevada at the Collar Lab Convention. And this session is How to Teach Styling. My name is John Jones, and I'm the moderator as well as a talker. And our other panelist is Tim Mariner. Would y'all please welcome Tim? And I have some demonstration dancers, uh, my son Vernon and my daughter-in-law Kayla, and Lee and Barbie Asheville are, are going to help us. And where'd Susan go? Oh, she's still back there. I couldn't see you, huh? And uh, Susan, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a stab at pronouncing Haley, Healy. Susan Healy is going to help us dance, and Tim's going to be dancing with Susan. So if y'all would, please come up and uh, let's get started with what we're going to do and what we're going to demonstrate. Vernon, if you and Kayla would be couple number three, Deborah and I'll be number one, and y'all can be wherever you wish, whichever side couple you wish. Now, in teaching styling, as with And my opinion has been for a very, very long time that we as callers must teach every little bitty thing there is to do to new dancers because they have no idea and do not know anything. So we have to teach every little bitty thing. Now I'm going to show you what I have been seeing and what I have seen for Sunday and Monday here at this convention. Vernon and Kayla and Deborah and I are going to do a right and left through. So we start by, and I have seen this all over a left handshake for the lady giving to the man to do a courtesy turn. That just sends chills all over me to do that. That is so awkward to me. That is not the definition of a courtesy turn. The definition of a courtesy turn is that the man puts his left hand out, she puts her left hand in his, and her fingers crook just a little bit over that, and her arm is stiff, because if I pull it, see, relax your arm. If I pull like that and it's relaxed, can't do anything, but it's stiff, and I lead and guide her around in the courtesy turn. The hand is to lead sides, right and left through. We watch them, the hand position, and the guide around. Now, if you noticed, Barbie had her hand kind of relaxed beside her. If you noticed, Susan put her hand right here on her edge of her hip in doing that. The lady's hand behind the back and the man putting his hand in it, we eliminated that 35 years ago. Can you believe it's still being taught? Yes, because the dancers are still doing it. Okay, Uh, watch what happens when we hold on to the hand. Hold on, Vernon. Put your hand back there, and we hold on to it, and the man's still got a hold of it. He's still got a hold of it and won't turn the darn thing loose, won't turn the hand loose. After a right and left through, what is normally the next hand that you're going to use? Right hand. 99 and 99 one hundredths percent of the time, you're going to be using that right hand after a right and a left through. Sides, right and a left through. And the hand is placed. You may place it there, ladies, on your hip. And the definition says, and the man may reach for it. It doesn't say grab it. But it depends, again, on the size of the lady. Now, what we teach in our class and our dancers, that the ladies... It, 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 with a petticoat on and a square dance dress, you reach down and get a whole wad of that stuff and put it up here beside, and it looks so pretty. We've got an exhibition dancer back in the back. Peggy, feel free to jump in anytime you want to, okay? Because I know how she dances, and I know how it looks, and it's really fantastic. You cannot believe how pretty they are to watch them dance. And uh, But with a petticoat, if they don't have on a petticoat, teach your dancers the ladies to hold their hand out as if they do 
get the little finger crooked up, you know, like you're, like you're going to high T. Somebody said, John, you do that really well, you know. <laughs> okay, ready? Right and left through. And watch where that hand goes. Out. Somebody said, I look stupid holding my hand out like, no, you don't. You look like a dancer. And that's what we're about is dancing. Okay? Now, two ladies chain. And we go across. And let's do a pass through and a partner trade because I want to demonstrate going toward the dancers. And I'm going to do this with my eyes closed. I taught Kayla how to dance when she was a teenager. And I know exactly where her hand is going to be. I don't have to look for it. Watch, I'm closing my eyes right and left through. I know it's going to be there. And that's where it should be. We as teachers have to teach every... Tim, feel free to jump in any time. You have to grab a mic. If you, okay. It's hard to dance with a mic in your hand and use both hands. And that's the reason I, Susan let me borrow her head mic to do this. And I appreciate it. Okay? Two ladies, side ladies chain. And watch that courtesy turn. And it looks so... Doesn't that look nice? Huh? All right. Sure. Please. Stick it in your pocket. St- st- stick it in your back pocket when you're not using it. So, so there's certain things that we have to teach, as John's saying. The, the, one of the fundamental things is just how to be a couple and, and how to s- stand proper and the proper posture and, and what have you. And, and when we're talking about posture, we're talking about standing up and, and, with, with, and not slouching forward, not leaning, or not looking at the ground. We're looking up. And I have to tell the dancers and remind them to look up. Because if they're looking up, if the dancers are looking up, they're going to be able to watch the arrangements and the formations and, and the things that are happening around them, okay? So uh, on the ladies' chain action that you just said, if the man doesn't budge and the ladies' chain at the sides of the hall, this girl coming across has to kickstart me in motion, all right? So you have to train the dancers to counter dance which means the gent has to slide at a left angle to the right, sliding his body slightly leftward to anticipate the lady taking the lady and taking her hand and being able to to escort her around properly. I'll demonstrate that. Please. We're going to have the head two ladies chain. The man should step back and turn to receive the lady coming to him. If it's a, and you teach your dancers if it's a two ladies chain or a four ladies chain, it's the man's responsibility to do it right. And and how many times do you uh, have new dancers and they stand in a square just like this, like we are, with the hands down? They're not even in dance position yet. When I get the music s- started, I have to remind new dancers because they're not used to it. Hey, this is a contact sport. We're in dance position. What is dance position? You take the hand, you have the, the gent has his palm up, she uses her palm. It's a platform, there's no gripping, the thumb isn't grip, grabbing the girl's hand, it's merely a platform for her to rest her hand upon. And I teach that these are inside hands that are being held. Now, for a teaching aspect, knowing what the inside hands are, very helpful. Now, if, I, if one or either one of us turns around, my inside hand is now changed. Because I've turned around and she hasn't. But it's still the nearest hands between the couple are the inside hands. Actions like scoot back need to know where the inside hand is or arm. Actions like flutter wheel help to know where the outside arms are at the times. Now, when you're dancing and if they get back home and they do grand squares and don't even take hands, how can you bend the line if you don't take hands? There's no line to have to be able to bend. And you have people moving all over the place or sashayed after the action because they didn't properly take hands to bend. Again, as we said, you have to teach your dancers every little bitty thing that you can think of and be on the lookout for it. I, I saw some not good dancing Sunday night and last night. Yeah, we get, we get, we're the leaders. And I'm disappointed. Yeah. I'm really disappointed That's in right. seeing that of callers not dancing properly. Now, there's one other thing that I wanted to mention that is not in the handouts, and if you don't have these, you darn well ought to get them. And these are the handbooks. Those of you who've been around long enough, these came out from Sets in Order years ago. They're still available through Palomino Records. And we get these and we sell them to our new dancers. 
are either two seventy five or three dollars a piece, and they buy them immediately. These are the only photos that we have left are in this book. The only photos that we have left, and we should all have these. And new dancers should get them. We don't give them to them right off the bat, but the, uh, after about three or four classes, we get, we let them know it's there. How many? Something is buzzing. It's outside the building, baby. How many are teaching what square breathing is? Any hands? What square breathing is? From a squared set, one of the first things we we do is is maybe heads or sides promenade halfway. And if I say heads promenade halfway and we as sides don't move, look how far they have to go. So heads promenade halfway. And if we don't budge, okay, so you, you have to tell the sides that square breathing means you, you're going to allow space for them to get around. You step into the middle. When they get past you, you back back out of spot, back into square position again. Square breathing occurs in a lot of calls. But you have to teach it from the fundamental square so they do see that. This is Deborah's idea, and she teaches this, and we used it last week down in uh, Pendleton, Oregon. And it's a great place to be. It's a great place to be. Lee and Barbie were there, and Susan did the rounds for us. So uh, this is something that you, you have if the heads promenade half, the sides go into the middle and start molesting each other. You see that? Have you had your dancers do that? They, they, they either start molesting each other or they start hitting at each other. What does it say? That they should move forward and touch? It don't say nothing about hitting at them people over there. Yeah, and, and to see callers do that makes me want to throw up. Uh, I was told when I began to call, if you're... That's a vibrator. That's a jackhammer going somewhere. And by one of my mentors who was Ray Smith and he's this much taller than me and a great big man he said John if you're going to be a caller look and act like one that really hit home and I, I, that's the way I feel like callers ought to be if we're going to be callers we ought to look and act like a caller and not look like some idiot out on the floor doing everything imaginable that means leading by example exactly now, here's what a courtesy turn from a static square position is a full turn around to face back into the center, correct? Does everybody agree with that? Watch this. Heads promenade half while the sides courtesy turn. Sides promenade half while the heads courtesy turn. Heads promenade half while the sides courtesy turn. Sides promenade half while the heads courtesy turn. Now, did that look nice? Because oh, yeah. you can't dance real good on the, on the carpet. But that eliminates any molesting going on in the middle of the square. I think it's dirty old men trying to <laughs> cop a feel of some woman. I do. I feel the same way about the Hungarian do si -do wrapping armor. I think it's dirty old men copping a feel of the women. We tell our dancers that if you don't want to do that and the man insists on doing it, take a step back and slap the thunder out of him. <laughs> and as soon as you do, we'll be right beside you to help you. And I don't need to have my butt grabbed on a touch of quarter. <laughs> yeah, or a nickel or a dime either. You know. <laughs> it's worth more than that. <laughs> worth a whole lot more than a quarter. Now, for all four ladies to chain, we see dancers all the time that the ladies don't have any idea where to put their right hand out here in the middle of the star to make it turn. They're snap looking and hunting and pecking and the ground. If you're spending that much time trying to figure it out, guess what? They miss the next call. All four ladies' hands should be in a star, in a bunch out there in the middle. Four ladies chain. The hands go up in a bunch right out in the middle, and like a star. The finger's pointing toward the ceiling, and the courtesy turn is done on the end, and you go right back immediately to the couple hand hole. Anytime anybody's standing beside you, you take their hand or touch their hand. Square dancing is take a hand, turn it loose, touch a hand, turn it loose, take a hand, turn it loose, constantly. Now, we are experiencing quite a bit from our older dancers the older we get the more afraid that we're going to fall four ladies chain and I've had ladies grab hold of my hand I've got arthritis in that joint on that first finger right there and they hold on to it so bad it makes me want to cry and they're afraid they're going to fall 
Now, you teach that they use resistance. We're going to do a right and a left through. You use the resistance to lead and guide, and you don't have to worry about it. Turn around. Ladies, do a U-turn back. Alamo style. Oh, did you notice how we all joined hands? Look at the handout that I gave you of styling in an ocean wave. My research tells me that this is the only way it's ever been written. Maybe it has been written some other way that I don't know about and that my research has not found. But I checked with Clark Baker as chairman of the definition committee and he's got information on everything. <laughs> There's nothing about square dancing that he doesn't have in his computer. And he sent me back and he said, that's the only way I can find that it's ever been written is that the hands are joined palm to palm Eliminate the arm wrestle thumb grip. Oh, definitely. Whatever you do, eliminate it. I've seen callers here, and I watched it last night in doing swing throughs and spin the tops, and they were grabbing that thumb in that arm wrestling thing, and it hurts, and it's dangerous, and it should not be done. The hands are here. The resistance should be Everybody, their arms are held. You don't relax. You don't. If I pull on you, you got to pull back. Don't let me do that. <laughs> and we teach her. We get out and dance with them. And, and if I pull on Deborah's arm or the lady's arm, don't let me do that. You know, pull back. You notice that our hands are not grabbed, our thumbs are loose, but our fingers are crooked, and we're in an Alamo style. We, I call Alamo style, Deborah calls Alamo style. We say Ali man left, Alamo style, and right to your partner in balance. Face back in, ladies. Let's first do an Ali man left to an Alamo style, and you automatically adjust to the hands up. It's so easy to teach, and it's so easy to do. Now, I know that the comments have been made for many, many years that the higher the level, the lower the hands. I'm telling you what's written in the book and what the pictures show. Can everybody balance, please? Now, the next call is balance, and we call balance, and the dancers stand there on one foot, and they kick the other one. Well, sometimes That's not a balance. Sometimes they just hike one leg up. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the standing like this, standing on one foot and kick the other one is not a balance. That's called stand on one foot and kick the other one. Yeah. Exactly right. That has nothing to do with balance. Ready, balance. Step touch back touch now tell me that doesn't look nice if you see a whole square doing that all at one time everybody ready swing through we go right we go left and balance step touch back touch do you see we all did it the same way together we track we hadn't practiced and how many beats did it take to balance four beats not one, one two not three, one beat to four. lift the leg and not one beat to, just to raise a knee. It took four beats. Like it's not the balance. dancer's fault. It's not the dancer's fault. It's those of us behind the microphone. Everything that we see on the dance floor is our fault as callers. And in order to get the dancers to do this balance properly, when I first introduce balance from an Alamo or a ring or a wave, I'll say forward and back because they're familiar with the action forward and back, and they know it takes four beats of dance music, and I allow that for those dancers to dance that. So from here, if I simply said forward and back, it's just a balance, forward and back, let's do it. And then we say, hey, by, by the way, some also refer to that as balance, especially from an Alamo ring. So then they learn, it's both ways. When same I for, beat. Go ahead, Tim. Same, same beats. When I first learned Alamo style, we didn't have swing through, hadn't been invented yet. And here's what we do. Everybody turn a right hand half and you balance forward and back turn a left hand half and you balance forward and back turn a left hand half and you balance forward and back turn a right hand half turn a left hand half and you balance forward and back turn a right hand half and alley man left have that's a, have a mic <laughs> alley man mike george <laughs> Oh, is he here? <laughs> All right. Uh, I had a thought, but it went away. Okay, let's practice this. 
Ali man left. Weave the ring. Promenade. Now, in the promenade, here, here. notice that the hands are joined like this. Oh, I see some people promenading with a left hand shake and a right hand shake and the hands down here. And what did the woman say? That it was embarrassing. I don't want to have my hands that close to the personal part of a man's body. But I don't know. All right? The microphone. And even if I do know you, I still don't want my hands there. See, okay? this looks stupid. It's it's ridiculous. Don't, don't you want to bounce the hands too and make, that, make it <laughs> while you're down there? Just... Oh. I start promenading with some lady and she starts pumping her hands up and down and I stiff mine up like you wouldn't believe. And I yeah, don't yeah. like that and I won't do it. On a promenade, if you get the dancers in a big circle and you're doing the, you know, your first night or whatever you're doing, however way you're introducing promenade, and you can see as a caller the dancers are coming around right in front of you. And if they have this underhand grip, or if they're doing things like that, you have to reiterate, guys, you want to point your fingers in the direction you're dancing. And that's the, that's the clue, because if I take Deborah's hands here and, and I'm doing something underneath, we're not dancing in that direction. We're dancing in the direction our fingers are pointing, and we're moving in that direction. And I don't have a grip hold of her hands. So uh, those, are, those are key points to show. Ready? Alley man left. Mike, 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 Mike. Weave the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, for the benefit of the recording, Clark, you're laughing. Wow. I, I talked about you a while ago. You sneaked in on me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you were already here? Oh, I didn't see you here. Sorry. He's blending. Uh, talking about him, he was here. Uh, weave the rings. Weave Bump the it. Rings for the benefit of the tape. For the benefit of the tape, we messed up the weave the ring. We were doing butt bumping and hand slapping and everything else that you could see out on the floor. And uh, did, it looked great, didn't it? Oh, it, oh, wonderful. Yuck. Synchronization. Yeah. Uh, so, teach your dancers, even if they're not wearing square dance petticoats, the ladies should hold their hands. Uh, ready dancing position and ladies dancing position. Peggy, what do you think? Or am I getting close? Yeah. All right. That's Ali Man left. Weave the ring. Gentlemen, put your hands behind your back. It's that simple, and you don't have to have let anybody try to beat on you. do so do Notice we did it back to back. Men, star left. Stop. I've noticed here uh, Sunday night and last night that a lot of the men were grabbing the basket star in a star when there ain't nobody in there but themselves. It and should it, not be. And it takes two or three counts of music to figure out how to grab the wrist, and you've lost the timing of the thing. It should simply be a star. Turn the star. So we're moving forward. Pick up your partner, arm around, star, and promenade. And the lady's hand is out like a beautiful dancer, okay? Back out at home. Now, let's do alley man left, alley man there. Go forward two, and you make a star. And you teach the men that you hook your fingers over the wrist of the man in front of you. It don't say grab it and start pumping it up and down like this. It just says hook your fingers over the wrist of the man in front of you in a pack saddle box star. And the girls are dictating how fast we're backing up. Let's go fast, guys. Come on. Make them run. Make them run. Make them run. Okay, everybody stop. Ease down. All right, shoot the star halfway. Girls in the thar. Boys back up. Boys go forward. Girls back up. You're in the dark. Go fast, girls. Go fast. Go fast. Dr drag them sap suckers around. Yes. 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 Right. Pack saddle for the girls in the middle. Hook your finger. Stop. I'm getting dizzy. Square your set. I just winded. Winded and dizzy. <laughs> Teach your dancers everything. 
Don't let them guess. Don't let them try to figure out. I go into an alley man there, and I have had men grab my elbow. I've had them put them up on my bicep and everywhere else but where it ought to be. Now, Get uh, your flipping hand off of me. Don't do that. You know, we know that there's styling differences and regional difference in styling, but that's more than a styling difference. The, the difference between a men star by the right and we're moving forward with fingertips pointing to the ceiling or pack saddle star is significantly different in that situation, in my opinion. And, and so we have scenarios where they're, they're making the stars, and, and people are teaching that if I say four boys go to the center and make a right-hand star or left-hand star, they make the pack, hand, you know, the, the pack right. saddle star. But if I say sides make a right-hand star, now we have confusion because the boys were told they have to make the pack saddle star, and the girls were told to make the palm star. So we come into the middle with a left hand. I don't know what to do because I don't know what to grab. The girls have their fingertips up. The guy's here trying to hook up and grab something, and, and it's a mess. And they're so focused on how to grab or take a hand that they're not taking the time to do the star in a proper amount of, that it should be done. So just be aware that... Uh, teaching in that manner affects other calls. So if you have four girls star, that's one thing. Four boys star, fine. But if you have mixed sexes starring, that pack saddle star for the men and the, and the palm star for the girls don't mix. They don't work well. And if it's a mixed up thar, two boys, two girls, it's a palm star. It's not a pack saddle. Okay. I don't know. I've got to read up on I would for have, sure. I on would that. have said everybody pack saddle, but it's it, it's, can, it's that's yeah. the end. it's stability. It's stability. Stability. And sure, Deborah. For for me, the idea of styling is not to push a certain flourish. It's to understand that. This, what we're showing you today, lends itself to stabilizing the dancers and to the call being able to be performed properly so it can lead from one into another. So to me, that's functional styling. And for a caller to tell me, you don't have time to teach that, then go find something else to teach. You, don't be, you shouldn't be teaching square dancing. Callers tell us all the time, I don't have time to teach styling. My club's pushing me to hurry up and get these dancers out on the floor, and I don't have time to teach styling. You don't have time to not teach it. Teach it from the very first beginning. As soon as the, Now, Joe Lewis, a caller from down at home, y'all, some of you may have heard of him, a longtime friend of mine in Melton's, and he told us don't start teaching until the people pay their money. He said, if you have open house and you have it open for two or three weeks before you close it, don't teach. Let Do play party stuff and let them dance. But as soon as they pay their money, then you start teaching. So I've used that ever since he told us to do that because it works. And because you don't want to run anybody off, you know. You, and you start getting nitpicky and teaching the proper way to dance as soon as they have paid up their money and they get in the class and you know they're committed. Now, when we started the styling committee, I believe it was 1975 or 76, and the chairman of that committee is Melton Luttrell, and he's sitting right back of the hall. And he and his committee are the ones that wrote these styling uh, comments and everything that we have that's a part of the definition. If you notice the definition of every one of our calls, uh, it now has command examples. It has starting formations, command examples, description of the term of how to do it. Then it has the styling, and it has the timing down at the bottom. And if you're not teaching every one of those, you're doing your dancers a disservice. You must teach everything. Our dancers know how many steps and how many dancing beats it takes to do every single call that they do. It, it was real interesting in Deborah's class last fall. We had one man in the class, and this is the first time a class member has ever done this. The second night, he hollered at Deborah and said, how many dancing steps does it take to do this? Mm. And he's the first new dancer mm -hmm. that has ever said that. <laughs> uh, if, to begin with, in a class, we, we wind up telling him, I said, but we teach them every single call. 
if I have a dance party or if I'm doing something that's just more folk dance stuff and, and what have you, uh, I'm not too concerned about in those dance parties if they're hoppy and skippy and balancing and whatever they're doing. They're doing their thing that they think they're doing. I'm taking the time to show them quickly so they can just get involved in it, dance a few of the patterns and, and intermix it a bit. And it's more for their enjoyment, entertainment, and fun. But when we start classes, when these folks have paid for a lesson, it really behooves us for the exp- the dance experience to be able to uh, be able to show these forms of styling things. Um, just simply, the dance step itself should be shown right uh, off the beginning. Right off with new dancers when you're teaching a class, and I, I call it class because I don't want to have to say new dancer session because it's a long time. So. If you'd simply say, men's palms up, ladies' palms down, take hand, everybody walk to the left, that's not descriptive enough. Yeah, they're doing it in that direction, but they're doing the heel-toe walking as, they're, as they walk. They're just walking and have no sense of rhythmic dance to what, to th- what that step actually is, where it, where it should be a shuffle step on the balls of your feet, on the toes, as you slide your feet, your heel is the last thing that lands, not the first thing, if at all. You shuffle that foot. Now, it's very difficult on carpet to do that. But as soon as I told a group that, and you hear the whole room do it, and they all go, wow, was that nice? And then you know they're all dancing at the same pace, usually at the same gait, because some guy might want to walk or a lady might want to take big walking steps, right? And instead of these nice little sliding steps that we are working them to get towards. And you still will have hoppy and skippy, but you hope that that will be eliminated when they learn the dance steps. So immediately you're showing a whole lot of styling just from dancing. From the very the beginning, if you notice one of the papers that we, you got that Bear Miller and I put together and, and uh just recently, to help in that regard, Ed Foote has three sheets of styling that, that he has that are published. Uh, lots of good information about it if you go out and get it. You should teach the dancing step, the proper dancing step, right off the bat because you know you're going to have those that bob up and down. Pardon me. Uh, pardon me. Uh, and, and, and we teach our dancers that their feet should never leave the floor. Never. You're on on the balls of your feet sliding all the time. We also teach them right off the bat that that tennis shoes suck. Deborah's wearing tennis shoes because she's got a problem with her uh, Achilles tendon. Buzz, 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 buzz. That wasn't me that time. That wasn't me either. (laughs) Can can we show another action? Sure. If the heads will simply pair off walk in so we eliminate this square through thing. Uh, let's step up to a wave, please. And we're going to do the action swing through so we have some counterbalance between the hands as we swing through. And the next action is going to be boys run. Ready? Boys run. Now, I want everyone to see where the hands were for the ladies. For the, I expect, as a guy, to know that there's an appendage on this side of her body and this side of the body called a hand. <laughs> that the hand is not somewhere behind the back, reaching around the backside to try to assist the man in running. So when I'm over here in in position and I have to do a run, I don't expect her to reach behind her back, if you would take your free hand, Susan, the other hand, your free hand, your outside hand, and try to find me and pull me around. And pull me around. I don't like that. I I, see lots of women doing that. A lot of ladies are doing that, and I explain that you have no idea what you're grabbing back there. You have no idea. Something's going on behind your back. But if you have your hand always in a six-gun position, that's draw, and they're ready for anything, you don't dangle them at your side. And how many times have you seen folks try to square through, and every other hand, the guy puts his hand in his pocket? Or it's, it's down here at his side. Now, if the lady drops her hand and I call boys run, I have to hunt for that. But if that hand's in, the, in a position in the dance-ready mode, we can then take inside hands. Her outside hand becomes our inside hands at the end of the call. That's kind of fascinating to, to teach it when you explain that. And if everybody will bend the line, please, and let's do a pass-through. 
I also explain that there's some counterbalance when you run. And a great way to demonstrate this is from here. And I want the very end boy to run around three dancers, but the others don't budge. Please. Notice that we are a body place away. We are out of position by one body on each side of the set. We are offset by one body. This is called a parallelogram. Being, being that the dancers didn't counter dance, they would normally slide over into the vacant area where the runner came from. So the dancers, dancers would counterbalance or counter dance and slide over a bit. But now, slide over, guys. Just we'll, we'll hold on right there. Let's have the very end girl run right. and nobody else move. Right. Look how over exaggerated Look. this can get. <laughs> Look how far out we are now. And if you did that two more times, you'd have, in your yeah, in your triple, whatever. <laughs> but so everybody, everybody, do a grand slide right. If you just would veer back over and slide back over. It's my left. Yeah, your left, my right. <laughs> So what we're doing is you have to train the dancers to be understand that between the two people, there's an area that we dance in. And this is the area where I occupy a spot. She does too. If I run, she will slide over to take that, that position beside me. It happens on a dodge. It happens on, on several calls. But if you don't explain it, a lot of times there's a dancer, and it only takes one, that won't budge, and there'll be a body spot in the middle or something and not hooked up, and then we're out of position, especially if I say all eight circulate. To where? You see, where are we going? So it's, it's really important. We can square our sets and get back up. Thanks, guys. But, again, that's one of the just little calls like that that you have to train folks. Just one little comment. The, um, where, where I have seen people not move is when the girls run. And the boys just freeze. They're not used to it, right? So use a golf term. Most of the guys know what golf is. They they know some of the players. They know the, um, uh, the, the tours that they do. And here's a term that is used when somebody hits a ball towards the, the, the green. What do they yell? Get in the hole! Right? Somebody's yelling that at the ball. And so... If the guy stands there and he's not moved, get in the hole. That they know. All right? Oh! And they'll go over and they'll fill it because it's a term they're familiar with. <laughs> There's one call that nobody should move, though. Fold. Yeah. And you have to direct that and be sure of that. Uh, make a line. And pass through. And the centers fold. Do we not square breathe here? No. Depends. Okay. Depends on the next call. You don't move from this point, but if you use the next call to make it move, then they should adjust to it. do it up. Ocean wet. And see how they'll adjust themselves into it. Now, the hand positioning thing, if you notice, no, leave it just like you got it. Deborah started doing this a long time ago, what she calls a hamster hand. Her thumb is curled under right here. I don't like it, but she does it anyway. I, I did it to protect my thumb from people grabbing my thumb. So I just tucked it in where it was. Thank you, where it was. Hello. <laughs> where my thumb was not available. <laughs> Hey, 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 this, this is, is Susan's headset. So she says, that's my microphone. This is, a, <laughs> this is a PG set here. <laughs> Community set. <laughs> now, and, and you notice what that we did, that we adjusted to that, and, and you teach your dancers how to do that because if they don't move, uh, centers back out and get in front of your partner. Mm -hmm. All right? Do to do, and don't adjust. Make an ocean wave and see what the girls have to try to do. See, they have no contact. They have stretched like crazy to try to even reach each other. So they, you teach them that they automatically move into that to adjust back to where they need to be. In, in, in fold, if I could jump in. in some, some folds I just know that there's some conflicts about because of where they should end or don't end. And if I were to do a center's fold, the only time I would do it is if it was to a right and left grand or something else that makes the big circle out of it. Just me personally. So I avoid the conflict there. 
without people worrying about it. But how many times have you been to events and you say normal lines facing pass through and you say boys fold because somebody's out of position. Maybe somebody lost a spot. And the next call is touch a quarter and they expect everybody to link back up and fudge a little bit and make, make those waves. Oh, so. here's, here's Deborah's favorite get out. Where are you set? This is her very favorite set up, make f facing lines, zero lines. See, when we're in caller school, we just say make zero line, mm -hmm. and you can't believe what they go through to try to get there for the first day. Yeah. Then, then we teach them the caller lab way of getting there, that the head two ladies, it's your responsibility. If your square breaks down, the head two ladies, you go back and square up, and the head two ladies, get your partner by the hand, reach over and get your corner by the hand, and back out and make lines of four, and the lines will be at the side position. Why is that? Because you can look at the caller and go, call something. <laughs> Come on, get with the program, man. All right, touch a quarter, circulate, boys run, slide through, right and left through, half sachet. No. Oh. No. oh, I'm sorry. Right from here. Right, right from, from here. here. Yes, okay, pass through, centers fold, alley man left. Yep. And you can't believe what the dancers go through trying to figure out how to do that. They because they they haven't been taught really well how to do the fold let's, on the various calls. Let's talk about uh, a pull by. You know, we we expect the dancers know what to do. We say pull by in certain definitions. Even right and left through, right and left grand, square throughs, those actions that require pull bys. And I get on the floor and demonstrate that if Deborah and I do not let go of hands and I hold on to her hand at the end of the pull-by, it's going to turn her some out or, or to the right. It's going to turn her not in the direction I want to do, especially if I'm doing square through or, or right and left grands. And so we tell the dancers to take the hand and walk towards each other, let go, and pass by. Reach, touch, let go. Reese and release, if, if that's the case. Reach and release. The idea of taking the hand and letting it go. And there's certain calls that are really require that because they don't want to be out of position, especially on square through and right and the left through. They'll be out of positions. So you have now, to teach those I wanted those to calls. back up to something that on the courtesy turn, putting your hand behind your back and doing this, and, and Deborah and I taught the styling session or did the styling session at the National in Oklahoma City last year, and there was a couple came up to me after it was over with, and they said, in contra dancing, if you don't do that, they'll ask you to leave. Now, I don't know whether that's universal. Have you ever had that happen to you, Clark, or it come up in your area dancing contra? But the, this couple said that, and I said, I understand that, but this is not contra dancing because we use our hands too quickly, and they've got to be ready to use. And as it's, it's written in the definition, it says that the lady may place her right hand on her hip, and the man may reach toward it or forward to it. It don't say reach over and grab a hold of it. How many? Am I right, Clark? Yeah. Or close? Um, we were just talking about the class. I mean, give me a sec and I'll get there. Okay. We'll go on to something else. How many on the action Dixie style to a wave, if we could just make slide and make a line again, we'll make lines and bring our lines together. I always tell the folks to keep your lines within arm's reach. So we have ladies chain and we use that action where the man leads the lady with his inside hand across while right. he leads the girl over. With just two fingertips. Guiding. He's, he guides her over. The gent will back over in and turn that left face angle as he slides to the right. Are we going Dixie style? We're there? going okay. to Dixie right. style. But on ladies' chain, we'd start that action Guide too. Them. So it's Help the, them. you have to tell the dancers on Dixie style that the bow of the action, let's just say on a standard couple, the man has to lead the lady or guide her across but slide over to where she was to take left hands of the opposite girl because we're Dixie styling and, Dixie do, styling and do your left touch a quarter action. Do you? It's Dixie style. He, he, he's grabbing her. All right. So, so I, I have to admit, I'm one that teaches to put the hands back there, but I use it only as a method because we don't wear dresses so much. The ladies aren't. And I, I find the guys need a target to reach for. And if there's no hand back there, it's open season sometimes. Yeah. Did you know that the man that did the uh, 
session Sunday afternoon, and he also did our opening session. But Sunday afternoon, he talked about salsa dancing, and he had a wrote up a cue sheet. Were any of you there? Yes, yes, yes. And down toward the bottom of that cue sheet, and he figured out his own uh, acronyms, H-R-H. That was his right hand. For her, it would be H-R-H, her right hand. He didn't put a slash on it. His right hand, lady's left hand, or whatever it might have to be. Down toward the bottom, he had H R H slash H R A. And it stands for his right hand and her left arm. But I didn't interpret that that way. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was it was her right hand, his right hand, and her left ass. Yep. Yeah. So but we have to be careful with what we're doing. When, we, when we're doing Dixie style to a wave, how many of the dancers have negative interference or transference of information between Dixie style and flutter wheels or reverse flutters? Okay. So in order to alleviate that, you have to stress this form of counterbalance when you teach Dixie style that they have the the, the bow has to slide over to the right to take that oncoming hand of the person that's coming towards them. And, and without that, they have the tendency to walk forward and think that they're doing flutter wheels or reverse flutters or those sorts of things. Um, and this kind of helps. So again, by teaching this form of uh, styling, the styling in it itself helps assist the dancers understand the concept of what the call is. So it's another thing. Okay, should we square back up? All right, back to Clark. Yeah, square up. Square up. So the courtesy turn styling says um, there's two alternatives for the women, but the one we were talking about, if she places her right hand behind her right hip, palm out, then the man places his right hand in hers without grasping it, leaving those hands available for the next call. Okay, that would clarify. And, and it, notice it says... Without grasping. Without grasping. Simply a touch. Okay, thank you, Clark. Can I ask a question? Susan? Does it say anything about her putting it in the small of her back? That's what I was taught I know. We had, in uh, 1910. We talked, we, talked about small, we talked about small of the back, <laughs> and we ended up um, with the term beside or behind her right hip was how we ended up with it. But I agree, I often teach small of the back. I think small of the back is a little further back than you want. I think it's a little offset on the side. It's higher than the hip, but it yeah. keeps his off, of off your butt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Here, here's, here's the call. One of our favorite calls, and it is brutalized so bad it is unbelievable. Here's the rhythm. Sides face grand square. Was that good or what? Well, you know. all right. Now, no, no. <laughs> the place is gone crazy. Ready? Sides face grand square. Whoopee! 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 Get somebody yeah. to video your dance sometime. <laughs> Melvin wants to say something. Uh, I was just going to say that's. Uh, I agree with everything you did, except that uh, should be followed by the definition of the call itself. Your definition committee defined grand square. Uh, the styling that you were doing was not styling. That was part of a misuse of the definition. It was an abomination of the definition. <laughs> How many of you see that? You see it all the time, right? Whose fault is it? Look in the mirror. Yep. Yep. That's whose fault it is. It's on tape. Yeah, right. 
they're teaching the definition correctly. Uh, the styling on that part is easy. That's just hand holds all the way through. Correct. All right. Now, we're going to do it right again. And you watch that every time, as I said a while ago, every time you're beside a dancer, you hold her hand, head's face, grand square. You take four yeah. steps on each side and you turn on the fourth step. If SERP goes to a dollar stop, that's the way it ought to be. That's Jim, you had a comment. Yeah, I had a question. Actually, uh, Grand Square is one where the caller inhibits styling either through use of music or through delivery of the call. Can you speak to that? Uh, yeah, I can show it with music after a while. Okay. It would be easier. I'm, we're going we're gonna to let everybody dance that wants to here in just a minute. Keith Ferguson, Saratoga, California. I had a question about the Grand Square handhold. When I learned it, we learned that when you were beside someone, you hooked arms. Is that gone out now, or yes. what is the story on that? That is not part of the styling. It's hold hands. It's a couple okay. handhold. Thank you. Same I, I, we, with never, centers we, in. we never did an elbow hook. Right. Same thing with centers in. Same thing with centers in. Yeah, I see these dancers doing this all the time, all the time. Golly, when did we take that out? We, we, we took it out at, at least 35 years ago or more. You simply slide apart and hold the hand. Verna? Yeah, and, and the only uh, – Vernon Jones from Springtown, Texas. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to uh, contribute here is, as far as styling is concerned, is helping the dancers understand what we talk about it by, by body weight control. And I'm not talking about a diet or anything like that because it's obvious I don't have one. But on Grand Square, it's one of them. Uh, that when you come forward at the middle half of the grand square, that your next action is going to be going backwards and vice versa for the other ones. And we don't teach, and this, and this applies to forward and back, the balances that we do. We so much teach we got to go forward and we got to go back. Well, if we're going back, our next action is more than likely going to be forward. So we need to be teaching them that we go forward and that we go back and we shift our body weight to that direction. Okay. The same thing with on any kind of balance. We balance forward and we balance backwards. Now I'm being kind of exagger I'm exaggerating my body style here, but we go forward and then we go backwards and our next move is going to be going that away. And it's just like the people do on Dancing with the Stars. They don't take which I love by the way, you know, chicks wearing half dang near half <laughs> nothing flying all over the floor. But they just don't get up and go, Okay, just throw me over there. You know, they, they know that that next move is coming up, and they're shifting their weight to go in that direction. And we've got to teach people to do that. Otherwise, we have the standing too straight up, and as they come backwards and the next move's forward, you see them, they got to adjust and, and come forward. So teach your, teach your people that they're going to have to shift their body weights back and forth. A good point. Thank you. Uh, oh, Deborah and I taught a class a couple of years ago and we had uh, four squares of new dancers, and we taught them really well. And we taught them how to do grand square from every kind of arrangement we could think of. We had the girls face grand square, the boys face grand square. Have you ever done that? Oh, man, it's neat to watch. You know, same sexes together. We did it every way that we could think of to do it. And they went out, and the club members took them out to their first new dancer dance. And at that time, our association was rotating the callers that did the new dancer dance. This caller almost maybe the first or second tip, and he said, sides face, grand square, six steps. If I'd have been there, I'd have shot him. You know, that new dancers ought not to be exposed to that at a new dancer dance. You know, that's in class somewhere. Our dancers took 16 <laughs> steps around, and they reversed back 16 steps. Right. And he said, I'm going to do that again. Sides face, grand square, six steps. Our dancers went 16 around and 16 back. And he stopped them. And he said, no, when you start the grand square, ready, sides face, grand square, take six steps and stop. And there was a guy, the biggest guy in our class. His name was John. He looked up at the caller and he said, our instructors taught us there were 32 steps in a grand square and we're taking every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. 
you know, there's also things where we see the Highland Swing for do si and we see the, the uh, uh, Lindy Balance or whatever they do now also at other places. They do a little shifting balance thing for do si None of them time as well as a do si does. But the reasoning the dancers are doing that is mostly because they're bored because we've called 101 of them at one dance in one session. We've called 100. Think about it. In every singing call, there might be four or five do si in a singing call, maybe more, seven. And you multiply that by seven tips or nine tips in an evening plus what you use in the patter. Next thing you know, there's, they're, they've, he- they've heard do si over 101 times at a dance. They're looking for another way to do it. Same thing if I say head square through. We say head square through, and everything we do is head square through, head square through. Eventually, they're going to say, well, let's do something different. Let's patty cake, bump, and rump, and turn, and go wee yeah. and and just stand there like we're stupid. Yeah. Okay? And uh, so the dancers do that out of boredom, maybe. They're, they're trying to – they want to have a sense of grabbing. They, they want to grab that person that they think they're having fun with. If you eliminate some of the – unnecessary dose of dose. And if you eliminate some of the square through actions with equivalents and things, those dancers aren't going to get in those habits. So uh, just to, just to, yeah. I heard, I heard a caller say here a while back that he did not teach his dancers how to swing until about the sixth or seventh class. He said, but I te- do teach them the Highland swing. Mm. Well, that was and I, did, I just turned around and walked off. But, but I, that, I didn't want to get in that argument. John, that was styling because they had the hand up and they looked. They had that hand. And he said the reason being that the men already have learned, they have learned to be offset to do this, and all they have to do is the man reach and take this hand, and he's got them in position to swing, and he's already taught everything. See where my arm is? My hand is down here? Wrong place. Yep. It ain't supposed to be there. It's supposed to be up here. Clark, I can't remember the exact word, but it's on the lady's shoulder blade, I believe. Right. Clavicle. Close. Vertebrae, vertebrae, vertebra. Yeah. Vertebrae, vertebrae, vertebra. But you do slide right but, hip to right hip. But I don't wear a bra. <laughs> but we teach in our class that the man's hand should be on the lady's shoulder blade, right at the bra level here. And that the right elbow should be up and away, especially if the lady is well endowed as Deborah is. And the arm should not be dropped down. I see dirty old men swinging like this all the time. Grabbing, just get Don't a sense tell of me they're not copping the field. I know they are. They've got to lean back. Yeah. Lean now, back. you take your partner in this position and you lean back slightly. Lay, tell the ladies to lean back a little bit. If I turn Deborah loose, she may fall. <laughs> And we're not dancing with the stars. And the yes, lady leans back a little bit. And uh, then it's a walk around. Now, Deborah was taught, and she still does, the buzz step. You can do either, and it works both ways. She'll buzz, and I won't. And we do it the same way. It's not easy to do on this carpet. But teach your dancers how to swing. Teach them how to disconnect from the swing. Is it going to be promenade? The man swings the lady until he gets to where he needs to be or is supposed to be. Then he places his lady beside him. And you never twirl a lady after a swing unless you're going to keep her. And she has nothing else to do. If you do a swing to an alley man left, no twirl. You roll the lady out to do the call. Put her on a right. If you want to twirl to a promenade, you walk into it. Teach it as a walking twirl. It's not on the spot. If the lady does not want to twirl or it makes her dizzy, she does this. I offer, she resists, and forget it, guys. Guys, too. Don't the, force it. The reason why most dancers aren't swinging on the singing calls is because we've rushed the choreography leading into the swing to the promenade, and they do this left star through. But they yeah. really haven't mastered how to swing. If you teach the swing and, and they all get the chance to master it, they'll enjoy it and will want to do it properly we tell them, go at ahead. the end of the singing call. We tell them in a singing call, square through three and swing your corner, and they come to the lady Left start, twirl. yeah, left twirl. And they do this and crank the lady around, and they ain't swung her yet. 
And they believe that's a swing yep. because they haven't been taught any differently. But the dancers out of self-defense are doing that because maybe we have crammed 68 beats of rhythm of uh, choreography into an area that should have 64 or 48, and then they, they try to get that two beats back by not doing it. You see? It, it's so. our responsibility. If you swing your corner, you swing her at least once and a half around till the man gets to where he wants to be and he places his lady beside him. Mm -hmm. We have the same issue with circle to a line. If we, they were taught how to do the proper release of a circle to a line, when to do the underarm twirl or when to just let go and let them do the back out trade portion, they won't slap and veer and couples run. Because they, they, if you're taught it properly and how to do it, they'll learn that it's not a big deal. That caller that showed the Highlands fling swing, he said, I don't have any problem with the circle to a line. I have the heads lead right and veer left and s s uh, the couple slide over and, or in the outfacing couple California twirl. And I, I, just, I just cringed. Uh, uh, sides lead, watch. Uh, well, I'm going to demonstrate Deborah. Sides lead right and circle to the line. That ain't the right of it. Let's do it again. Sides lead right, circle to the line. You offer the underarm turn to a straight walkout, and she turns under. It's very last minute. Right. Very right last at the end. If she resists the walkout or the twirl, you can just release hands, and she can do it without that. Spur Watch up. it with, with the release of the hand. It worked great. All right. Now, in this time when you break, don't move. As soon as you break, sides lead right, circle to a line, lead stop right there where you are, and we circle out here to the line. Come around just a little more. Whoa, don't, don't slide. Come come in close. Come in close. Tim, come on in. Come on. Right there, right there. We wind up with a parallelogram. If we don't teach the breaking person to slide sideways at least two steps, the lines will be offset. We teach it. Girls break, half, one of them half sashayed and the other one not. Teach them a little different ways of doing it. Then they learn how to do it. We're going to have to dance pretty quick. John, one thing that we've noticed with new dancers is that they break too soon, and the gal's out here spinning and they're spinning way around out of in position. the middle of the spinning around in the middle of the square, and she doesn't have any idea where she's supposed to go. Or the guy decides he wants to start the twirl too soon, and then the girl's being dragged around. Right. Okay. Now, what I want to do with some music is I want everybody to dance that wants to. Just shove these chairs out of the way, whatever you want to do. Anybody else that wants thank, to let's dance? Let's thank our square. Yeah. Yay. Now, the, our square, the, this couple right here, Lee and Barbie Ashwell, president of the National Executive Committee that operates the National Convention each year. They're from Portland, Oregon, uh, Salem, Oregon, excuse me. And uh, we appreciate them very much for being here, and I ask them to help us. Nice hand for Lee and Barbie. Thank you. And this lady right here is a round dance cure from uh, Longview, Washington. And she's the new executive director of Round -a Lab. And she's an excellent cure. We do a weekend with her down here in Pendleton, Oregon, and have a really good time. And, and listening to, I'm going to tell a story. She knew I would anyway. Uh, listening to her cue it just amazes me and just tickles me to death. I would have sworn she was from Mississippi or Alabama <laughs> because she starts out around, she says, a part, point, and together, touch. <laughs> two forward, two steps, and pick up. <laughs> I thought, you're, oh, that's right. She told me, she said, I'm from South Washington. <laughs> South, South Washington. And uh, my son, Vernon, and my daughter-in-law, Kayla, thank you very much for helping us. And for Tim. Now, anybody that wants to dance, make a square. I want to show you something. Today, y'all. Come on, make a square. While make you're squaring two, up, give us at least two squares. While you're squaring up, on the back is the handout uh, that I had written for the session. Also, folks, remember on your thumb drives, you have all these handouts for all the sessions. So uh, the thumb drives you have, it's very, very important to keep hold of those. Does anybody else want to make a square? You know, close it up just a little bit. We can make a little more room. Suck it up. Okay, okay, we can do that. 
Jim, I've forgotten. What was your question earlier? It was about use of music and delivery of calls. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I need another couple. Please. Okay. Now, in, in many cases, and Tim, if you want to jump in, please do. In many cases, uh, the dancers wind up looking bad because the caller's calling bad. And, oh, shoot, I'm sorry. And we callers can make you look really bad in a short period of time. It doesn't take long. I'm going to demonstrate both. Okay, Tim, would you play me some music, please? Bow to your partner in the corner, two, and circle to the left, all eight of you. Do paso and a little more do, and a chicken in the bread pan pecking out dough. Partner left, make an alley man thar, and the men back in, and slip the clutch, and alley man left the old left hand, and come on back and promenade, go round the land, and promenade them two by two, and home you go like y'all told you to. Y'all forgot where home was. Now, this lady that I mentioned to you guys earlier, she's one of the best dancers that ever lived. I made her look terrible. <laughs> and that's awful for a caller to do that. You know, right from the get-go, he said, bow to the partner corner, too. You didn't even allow them to get the chance to do those two little things. Yeah. And, and so the dancers just start, nying, nying, and they go on to the next call and forget the rest of it. You know, a bunch of malarkey. Timing. Play. <laughs> Bow to your partner in the corner too. Circle to the left, all eight of you. Circle to the left and around you go. Do a dope pass and a little more dough. And a chicken in the red pen picking out dough. Back to your honey, make an alley man thar. And I'm into the middle with the backup star. And you back along up in a Cadillac car. Slip the clutch, a left alley man. And now right, a left grand. A hand over hand around you go. Smile at your feet, won't work. When you meet her, promenade on two by two. And I walk a little lady, go home, you do. And I get along home, around you go. Now, ain't that about different? You know, doesn't that look? Yeah, can you imagine trying to dance a whole evening to a stupid caller clip timing like that? I certainly wouldn't go back. Or I may go ask for my money back and leave. And I think dancers ought to have the right to go ask for their money back if the caller's calling that type of crap. How many of you all have gone to visiting areas or, or regions and you're calling and I can tell you when those dancers are so used to clip timing because they're running I've been to places where I've said head square through four hands and do a swing through the next call out of my mouth better be centers pass through because they've done a boys run a ferris wheel and they're they're ready to go to Alamand and they're going what and uh, so so they those dancers are used to clipping the timing they went on a Ferris wheel. Head couples, if you'll lead right, please, and veer left. If, the dan if this end man drags that girl into the center on a Ferris wheel as fast as he can, that area caller or whoever it is that's teaching in that region is showing them clip timing or using a lot of clip timing. These dancers should meet in the middle. They don't necessarily need to touch hands, but they can get side by side before they initiate the wheel. Otherwise, this girl's being dragged by this man. And you want to see a good way to do it. Everybody partner trade first. And the same thing works this way. If this girl drags this man into the middle, because she, but she's not used to doing that, so maybe the men will, will not allow that. But do a Ferris wheel from here. Couples start to have to extend. And then wheel in at the last minute. You see? But if you're in an area where they're clipping timing, they're going to drag there, and you're wondering, I I'm feeling rushed tonight. All right. Center's very home. Now, this time I want, I'm going to call a square through, and I want you head couples to go in, do that patty cake thing, and then pair off and face your corner. Okay? Music. You don't know how. Well, fake it. Heads up to the middle, and you come right back. Square through. Two hands. Pretty much okay. takes care of that. All right. Now, square your set. Okay, they figured out. They're smart. They figured out that I'm going to do it again. That this next time I'm going to say, no, I mean, let me take it back. Let me change it. We're starting all over again. Erase what I just did. I still want the head couples to do the patty cake thing and the power off. Ricky, music. 
heads up to the middle and you come on back. Square through. Three hands. Okay, square up. All right, now, they're real smart. They know I'm going to call square through three hands again. They know that that's what I'm going to do because I'm a smart head. See? Okay, head couples, you know that I'm going to say head square through three, so you do a partner trade instead of a square through. Okay? Ready? He music. Heads up to the middle, and you come on back. Square through. Two. And if you notice, when I'm doing that, I can see them out of the corner of my eye. I never look at them. I don't ever look at those people that are doing that because they know I'm trying to make fun of them or what have you, or I won't, I won't make any remark at all. I, I, then usually after the tip is over with, they say, when you say square through, you really mean it, don't you? I said, yeah, if I didn't, I wouldn't have called it. I, I, can know, I know the first two calls out of my mouth if the groups have been taught styling or not. If I say bow to the partner corner two, and all they do is look at each other and turn their heads, and that's all they're doing, they've not been shown anything. You're in deep trouble. Yep. And the, the rest of the night, I'm going to have to be careful what I call. If I say uh, everybody half sachet, and they do the half sachet, let's just every in your own score at half sachet, okay? And if they take hands, then I think there's some problems. Because from a square a set, if they join hands in a circle, you're talking they, about, yeah, right? if they go back and make hands and make a big circle, I know I have some trouble that night. Uh, because a half sachet is just, if I do not already have hands held, I'm going to do it with the person that's on the normal couple, hold, hand hold. Again, half sachet. And if you oh, see, they all did it right. Did it nice. Oh, and, super. And all wow. that counterbalance is the same time. But if you see somebody roll away, then you know that, well, there's, they, there are going to be some problems. Maybe. You know, men doing a half sachet, I mean, yeah, doing a half sachet from a half sachet position, from a one half position, that's the only time we have the opportunity to go in front of a lady, so take advantage of it. <laughs> and, the and rest let's, of the time we have to go behind. It might be roll away. Everybody roll away. And again, from a squared set, they stand as a, as a normal right. squared couple. But if they take hands, they're ready to do this roll away, roll right. away, roll away, roll away thing. You're in deep doo doo. Yep, veer home again, please. Square your set. All right. Now, uh, an, another time I went into guest call, and I found out later that these dancers had just graduated from their class. They had been all the way through mainstream. And I said, bow to your partner, and you cornered two and all join hands and circle left. And two squares stopped and looked at me like, what did you say? Can you imagine? And I thought, it's going to be a bad night. Oh. <laughs> and it was from then on. But they hadn't even taught, been taught how to join hands and circle out. And I about had a heart attack. I could, I could not believe it. And it was so sad to see that. Okay, now, this routine that I'm going to dance you through, it's a very old routine, and it's called a Queen's Quadrille. And it has exact number of beats for everything that is done. It, it, it four beats, four steps on each side of a grand square, and uh, halfway through, uh, through, I may say heads face grand square. Then after the grand square, we do a four ladies chain. That takes eight counts to do a four ladies chain. It takes eight counts to chain them back. Are we ready? Let's practice just a little bit with music, and then I'll start over and do it again. Sides face, grand square. Whoa. Now stop right there. See, I did not start where you could have the first downbeat. Okay? Let me do it again. Sides face, grand square. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Slow down. One, two, three, four. One, two, reverse now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So many callers will cue it one, two, three, turn. And dancers begin to think they're supposed to turn on count number three. Turn means four. One, two, three, four. And to, to make it be right. If the dancers do that, there's not time enough for a swing in the middle of it and there ain't time enough for a swing on the end of it. Okay, we've done a grand square all the way around. The next call, music, Mike, I mean, I was looking at Mike back here and I said, sorry, Tim. Four ladies chain with a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chain them back. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
or seven, eight. Uh, now, uh, get in promenade position. Let the music go, uh, Tim. It's okay. Let it keep playing. It takes 16 beats to promenade all the way around. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Only if their shoulders are together. Right. Take, should take exactly 16 beats to promenade all the way around. It takes eight beats for the head couples to do a right and a left through. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight. Why does it take eight? Because it takes two counts for them to get together to make contact. If you're already in an eight chain through position or in a box formation, it only takes six because you drop two beats because you're already close together. It takes eight beats for the head two ladies to chain. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six. We quit at 12, right? Oh, quarter two? No, I thought it's 12. Does it? I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Let's do the thing. All right. And the same thing is going to go for the head, uh, the sides, okay? Everybody back home, square your set. We're going to dance the thing all the way through this time. Queen's quadrille. Got to get the phrase. Sides face, grand square. I'll give the commands on six, seven, and eight. further I go, the less I will say. You memorize the routine. Four ladies chain and go. Chain them home. Promenade. One, two. Heads, right and left through. Sides right or left through. Two ladies chain. Circle left. Corner swing twice around. No twirl. Promenade. And smile. Heads right or left through. Sides go, right and left through. Two ladies. Circle. Corner swing twice. Promenade. Memorize the routine. Get ready for the grand square. Heads face grand square. This is Bones on ESP. I use four ladies chain. Go. Chain them home. Promenade. I use the music box dancer to do this. And it works out really, really well. Head couples go.
Beautiful. Mr. John Jones has given a nice hand. Good. Nice hand for Tim Mariner. Thank you all for all coming All of our tonight. dancers, thank you all so much for being here. Appreciate it.